Can you all see my screen? Okay. Yeah, okay, you can see, you can see. Uh, it's it's an open slide, right? I mean, it's not just PPT. Perfect, it's, 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 it's perfect. You don't it's worry. Perfect. Uh, it's okay. Is perfect. Okay, okay. Thank you, Antonia. So, um, I will... Um, I will present about uh, Melanesia today. Uh, as you see this picture, uh, the sky is from um, one of the area called one of the regions of Melanesia called as Bani uh, It's a distinct identity of Melanesians. Uh, black, dark-skinned guy uh, with blonde hair or uh, frizzy hair. At, at the same time, it also shows the present situation by he holding a bottle and a tin can uh, and how uh, it is now shifting from being totally tribal to becoming something of present. So as I come to uh, uh, what is Melanesia? So, yes, uh, so Melanesia is a part of, uh, uh, is a sub-region of Oceania in the southwestern Pacific Ocean. It extends from the island of New Guinea in the west to Tonga in the east. Has this already been talked about uh, before that uh, the extent of Melanesia? Uh, uh, and we, are, we had also discussed about the number of islands that become a part of a Melanesian uh, identity. Uh, we shall discuss about the same, uh, each region wise. Uh, so, my, this presentation. First, we'll talk about general identity of Melanesia, the language, their culture, etc. And eventually, uh, the number of regions, number of islands that, that are a part of Melanesian uh, islands, a group of islands. Uh, and uh, with those regions, I have also sort of then come, come to the, uh, I have then shared about, uh, uh, about the communities about the kind of art they make and the uh, and the ritual uh, the ritualistic practices that they perform. So the name Melanesia in French uh, Melanesie was first used in 1832 by French navigator Jules Dumont. Now etymologically Melanesia is we wanted to discuss this, but it's just an idea to uh, revise this. So it has to come up come. Uh, slowly to the uh, idea of art that is practiced by these uh, by these uh, a very large ethnic diverse community of Melanesians. It's Mela means black and uh, Asia means uh, land, so black island. And as I already showed you a photo, uh, the first photo, it's a dark skinned guy, it's a black guy, uh, and so. The majority of the people there are black, and uh, some of the photos that I'll show you later, they also, there also, we are so clueless about that land. So, uh, so my research is uh, only depend has been dependent on uh, Wikipedia and some of the links that I've found. So they, uh, I've just put mana because mana is a term called of uh, is it a, is a cultural uh, belief of spirits and ghosts and. Uh, with this idea of spirits and ghosts in their community, they also have certain practices to keep uh, their houses protected from these mana or mana. Some of the pronunciations also I am not a little, uh, little clear about, uh, but certain I've Googled and I've come across, I have got it correctly. Uh, nevertheless, uh, so Melanesia is not a country, but instead a cultural area. Cultural area is a term used by anthropologists to refer to a geographical region where people share many of the same traits. Now, Melanesia has Melanesia, the group of islands, the group of islands which are a form of country. They have their own distinct, uh, uh, they have their own distinct community uh, uh, customs. So they have their own different. It's 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 it's, it's has it's very distinct. It's it's diverse. The native inhabitants of Melanesia called Melanesians are character sticky dark skinned with frizzy hair. They are sometimes referred as Papuans from the Malay word Papua meaning the frizzy head. 
uh, well, as we will go ahead, we'll also speak about uh, the diversity of their language. It is so multifarious. There is not just one language, but uh, there are many languages spoken by sub communities, by sub ethnic regions, by by sub uh, locals, uh, and eventually after the. Um, uh, after the invasion of uh, Britishers, the Europeans, uh, as the, a lot of culture has changed. A lot of historians or anthropologists have also started uh, distinguishing from what it was before and what it was after uh, Europeans entered. So that's why some of the art is described as traditional art, while some of the art is not described as traditional art. And uh, it, this is. This is this is just a short glimpse from what I had read about Malaysia since past these number of days that I'm working on this topic. Over the time, uh, so Europeans, uh, after having visited Malaysia, they consider Malaysia as distinct cultural rather than racial grouping. And uh, Robert Codrington is one of the British missionaries. Uh, it is said that he's uh, immensely worked on Melanesia and he also brought a book. Now, as we've already discussed, that Fiji is not a part of uh, Melanesia, and uh, but he's already mentioned. Uh, so, and also I couldn't find some proper text to give me uh, to give me this uh, this data about it. Now. As we move ahead, uh, so it, it's already been told that uh, Melanesia is is a part of Oceania. Or what is Oceania? Again, Oceania is a total a sort of a hub of three of three of these Asias, like these lands, Melanesia, Micronesia, Polynesia, and Austro Australonesia. So these all four together come to become a part of Oceania of Pacific area, of South Pacific area. And here you see, uh, this, uh, I, I've, I've not read about Polynesia, but uh, yes, it is said that Polynesia are quite, uh, Polynesians were quite dominant over this area. Nevertheless, as we move ahead, we understand that it is said that the people of Melanesia Uh, have a distinct ancestry. Uh, now, uh, 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 it's the migration has been taking place since a long time from the period of prehistoric, from the period of prehistory until the time of proto history. Now, proto history is the age where it is, uh, proto history is the age, is the time where it starts when uh, certain ideas to document history has come about whether in form of uh, symbols or forms. So we can say that around in this valley civilization with respect to art culture, it's a proto-history. Since that period onwards, the, the concretization of Melanesian culture has come upon. But however, the people of Melanesia have a distinctive ancestry according to the Southern Dispersal Theory. A number of human beings emigrated from Africa between 50,000 and 1 lakh years ago and dispersed along the southern edge of Asia. Uh, so, as far as geographical ge geography of our globe is concerned, where we again spoke about it, how the lands, uh, the lands grew apart and 1 lakh years ago, it is said that these people, they went into the continent of Sahul. That's the name of that landmass. And, and then certain people that from the west, they shifted to east. And some of the areas from the east, they shifted to that area of South Pacific Ocean, Oceania. And that's uh, that of Melanesia. It is said that Melanesia has an indigenous culture irrespective of... Uh, uh, Micronesia, Polynesia, and uh, uh, Australo Australonesia. Now, uh, I have sort of given the basic idea of what Melanesia is. There is a lot to read because there's a lot of research that has happened on these people because because of the incredible diversity that they project. 
there are with respect to languages they speak uh, some of the islands of Valencia are now uh, quite urban uh, while some are still uh, are remote and they still follow this tribal pattern of living there are around 13 19 languages in melanesia densest collection of distinct languages are not almost three times as dense as in nigeria our india is something around like on the fifth rank in terms of uh, distinctive and diverse and multifarious languages and the country nigeria is a country famous for having a very large number of languages in a very compact area Pidgins and Creole languages have developed from trade and cultural interaction within the area with the wider world. Here is somewhere we come to the idea of languages that have been cultivated in Melanesia. Uh, so, top, most notable among these are Tok Pisin and Hirimoto. Even in this Tok Pisin and Hirimoto, it's Tok Pisin that is quite, uh, that, that, that will recur all the time when you read about Melanesia and uh, so these islands of Melanesia also have a name in Tokpisin. What is Pidgin and what is Creole? Now Pidgin is a term given to the idea wherein if there are two languages, for example if we have Marathi and Gujarati and one fine day uh, because Marathi and Gujaratis are trading with each other and because of the inability to understand the languages, they will eventually create a language that is a mixture of it, a compound of it or whatever. And they'll have some words of Marathi, some words of Gujarati and, and eventually they'll create a language which is neither Marathi, fully neither Gujarati and it will form a, 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 a language which will be a pidgin. So now, pidgin is the first is the first layer. As the pidgin gets concrete, it gets gets uh, gets used more and more by the community. And then when they when their kids also start using that language, just like it's their own mother tongue, it becomes a Creole language. Creole is a concretized term of pidgin. So. <clears throat> So there are many Creole languages that exist in Melanesia. Examples of other Melanesian Creoles are, as it has already been there on the slide, it's really, I don't know how to, Solomon Islands, Pijin, Vistlama, Papuan Malay. Uh, so, but yeah, now, as we speak about um, languages, uh, it's, it's a culture of any region is identified by, its, by, by the stories or by the legends or by the myths or by the folklore overall umbrella category that, uh, uh, that circulates around. The thought processes also evolve of a culture through the idea of uh, through through what is a common uh, through the common things that is being practiced by the community or a group of people and from that is generally reflected in folklore uh, <clears throat> i was trying to focus on folklore uh, but of course i couldn't uh, go deeper but i came across this folklore of uh, creation myth in the sepik river region of papua new guinea the origin of myth any group tells of a crocodile. A crocodile is split into two, his upper jaw became the heavens and his lower jaw became the earth. For many of these groups, there was also uh, there was also um, uh, there was also an original pair of humans that sprang from the mud and are responsible for populating earth. In this origin myth, however, the original pair are brothers. <clears throat> we have uh, so all the cultures have uh, all the cultures have uh, a mountable size of creation myths, and all this creation myth uh, they they spring from the uh, from the life of that region. So from this 
I feel the crocodile because uh, it's because because it's all water around and there will be many crocodiles and that's how crocodile might be very important for them and that how uh, the creation myth also arises from uh, this animal uh, crocodile. Now, uh, speaking of uh, religion, Christianity has spread throughout in Malaysia. <laughs> Missionaries are very active in this region now. Uh, uh, they, Melanesians already have certain ideas set in terms of spirits and ghosts. Christianity is said to develop after uh, European uh, yeah, uh, entry and uh, has a num by its, as the number of missionaries entered, uh, the Christian faith began to spread. They also believe that most of their ancestors inhabit the same plane of reality that they do. In fact, in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, when the nations saw the first Europeans, they believed them to be ghosts of their dead ancestors returning to the community. Some groups jokingly refer to white tourists in the same way. So, so it's uh, so uh, it seems like the with the religion of Christianity coming in uh, and so today uh, the faith has been uh, has become a prevalent thing but their culture is more about these spirits and ghosts <clears throat> now we come to music there are a number of musical traditions now this is very rampant because uh, the uh, the factor through which music happens is is, is still is still extend there and it's become a, it's become a, uh, an identity of Melanesians. There are a number of musical traditions within Melanesia. In the Solomon Islands, there's a tradition of panpipe orchestras. Drums are nearly universal in the musical traditions of Melanesia. Melanesian drums are usually handheld, hardware shaped, and single headed. The top cushion word for this type of drum is kundu. Now, the, the photo that is seen here is from Metropolitan Museum of Art and it is a proper, and it's a kundu. It's been titled as M-E-M -E and it is a kundu. It's a hard glass shaped. I just as it has been described here. In many highland societies of Papua New Guinea, a large group of groups of men play drums together at ceremonial gatherings called Sing Sing. Now, uh, they have a, uh, there is a, uh, they have, they, they have a set of rituals uh, of which are commemorative, uh, which also commemorate death. And there's a lot of art that also revolves around the death, <coughs> like masks and all, which we'll see later. Malaysia is a tropical region and its inhabitants experience the hardship of life in an environment wherein rain, heat, and mosquitoes are ever present. <coughs> it is said that uh, Malaysia, uh, Melanesia has uh, uh, malaria is an endemic disease in Melanesia. Now, as we come to their uh, as we come to their lifestyle, their attire. Uh, so uh, originally, the tribal men, the tribal community, <coughs> the men did not wear uh, any clothes. Uh, rather, they just had penis gods, gods like I don't know whether it's the same god that we eat, but yes, it is. Uh, and spears around 1880. This is the photo of 1880 per se. And uh, as you see in the photo, they have this. Uh, they have a sheet around the penis, uh, which is made from the vegetable, uh, and uh, it is it is it is it is typically large sized, maybe an idea of giving a secure protection. Again, another photo. Uh, it, this is a photo of a King Jacks, uh, mid nineteenth century. Uh, so we can say until. The usher of modern period, they, uh, the tribes uh, still followed a 
uh, a traditional pattern of living and clothing. Now, as we cover a basic idea of Melanesia, I come to the point of the um, islands. This is exactly from what we were taught. So, Melanesian islands, uh, so New Caledonia, the New Hebrides, New Britain, New Ireland, Admiral T. Island, New Guinea, they all come under Melanesian islands. Uh, this is, uh, I've already shown you one map. This is again just a map of Melanesia showing New Caledonia, uh, New Guinea. Solomon Islands, so some of the islands, which is, which is some of the islands that we just that I just mentioned in the Melanesian, are a part of Solo, uh, Solomon Islands. Now I come to this new Caledonia. As I had I had told you that uh, with respect to the regions, I'll come to their culture and the art that is practiced by them. So has to give a a, a proper uh, division to how I can present New Caledonia. Is, uh, it's already seen here. New Caledonia is around uh, this part. It's, it, 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 it was under France, and that's why French language is quite common. It community, although there are many communities, but I guess Kanak community is quite popular, and that is why there are a lot of uh, a lot of written about it. They. Uh, they practice wood, wood carving and basketry. Um, basketry is questionable as a traditional art uh, because it is said that uh, that specimens of basketry uh, are of later period, and that's why some of the historians or anthropologists they question its its identity of indigenousness. They also do soapstone sculptures, paintings bamboo and graving. Uh, pillow is a traditional kind of dance. And Jibao Cultural Center is the extent center which organizes many, uh, uh, which, uh, 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 which conducts exhibitions and <laughs> performances. Now, uh, this is a present map of New Caledonia. Here we see from here the Melanesia starts, this mark C, Arafur C2 here, and this is New Caledonia. This is the wood carving. It's a Kanak wood, wood, wooden carving. Uh, so now this, this is where the uh, the idea of mana or the spirits, the ghost, comes in. This is they uh, they 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 say that this is the, they, these wooden carvings by Kanak community. They are the representations of hawks, ancient gods, serpents, turtles. They are carved from tree trunk, trunk and um, and they are uh, placed around um, around their, around their houses. Uh, we will come across. We'll come to the photo of the same. Here is yet another wooden carving by Kanak community, and so there are like uh, a has to go further. It's like this is one thing, and then there is another. Term, which is fleshy fat tiere, the fleshy flesh fat tiere, which is another totem pole with symbolic shape made from again wood. Fleshy is a general architectural term for spire. It is used to define a small but tall pose that is fixed at crossing of the nave and transepts in cathedrals and large churches. It means carved rooftop spear, which adorns the grand case or the great hut uh, of the chief. Uh, so uh, this 
this thing is it's it's like this is the this is another identity marker of Malaysia, and it's the most important wooden sculpture uh, uh, for the chief and uh, uh, for the important people of Malaysian community, and flesh. So there there's another another photo which shows that how these fleshy fatere fatere are placed. If you see, it is placed on top of the house as a spire, and these are also some of the wooden carvings here. This is the very simple representation of a house. The rich arrow have always been carved from hoop wood, a tree. Mostly, all of these woods are made from the trees that belong to this area of New Caledonia, and. And this flesh of Fatere is so important in their culture that it is also present in the uh, flag of Kanak community that makes it. This is another, uh, this is uh, so uh, because this region is so distinct and it is so, it is so natural uh, that uh, they, uh, I found a lot of. Uh, papers and articles that talk about the birds of this entire Melanesian group of islands. This is one of the endemic birds called uh, Tabu. That's Kabu. And the, it's, it's a flightless bird, but it has the capacity to um, move around very quickly and chase and also make tools. Now we come to New Britain. Now, New Britain and uh, there are some more regions that that have been uh, that have uh, uh, sort of suffered the Britishers, and then there has been a decolonization movement around. And so, so, uh, so, so I came. I I did not find a lot of amount of uh, cultural text around it. There would be because. They are a part of it, but there's a lot of lot of more story about Britishers taking charge of uh, whoever or, or whichever country presided or governed them uh, during that time. So this is a photo of uh, New Britain, the original uh, the islanders, the, the people who lived there, and the number. And you can see that um, they're all covered by. Uh, tree stuff like branches the hay and all for the clothing now new britain is also in topicing the creole language of melanesia as well as new britain so it's very interesting to see how new britain uh has become topicing in the idea of how they would have pronounced it considering the uh, And similarly, all the other lands also have uh, have their uh, original names in Tokpusin and other uh, regional languages, Pijin or Creole languages. Uh, so we had here, we had our New Caledonia. Here in this area, we have New Britain. Now we come to New Island. Again, see the top person is New Island, like it's nearly the same, uh, but there's some sort of a nuanced way of pronouncing it. New Island ha had uh, got me a lot of information about different cultural practices that they conduct. Three distinct cultural practices are characteristic of the native people of New <coughs> Island. Kabai. Kabai is a community, and they have their own set of ways. Malagan is a form of a ritual and also a culture, uh, also a community, cultural community that uh, practices the, the ritual of Malagan. I may be wrong in some information. So, and Tubuan is again, uh, um, I guess it's a, a little interesting. Tubuan is also a culture. Tubuan is also, uh, Tubuan, I forgot it's born is a 
I get back to you tomorrow is something related to that ritual or something. Some I get back to you. How? So Malagan. Uh, Malagan is a death ritual. Uh, also spelled as Malangan or Malangan with a greater stress on G. And they are they are uh, traditional events that uh, that happen during the death uh, of anybody. The and so during this ritual they have wooden carvings prepared for ceremonies and to the entire system of traditional culture. Uh, it's this Malagan is a word from a language called Nag. Uh, is that a message for me? Carry on, carry on. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is another uh, wooden carving for Malangan ritual. While a Malangan uh, ceremony is always held in the name of one or more people uh, who have died in recent years, it is not merely uh, a rite. Uh, many other interactions take place within the overall event. Uh, like, so it's like if there is a one event happening, they also mix it with all other events, like uh, administrative events, like paying debts or uh, or or uh, or like a jury. Uh, like if there is any problem within the community and if, if it needs to be resolved and all, so so it's like. One is happening, let's do all others also while we are commemorating that. Uh, now, in this photo that we saw, the above photo, these are all masks. That mask is known as Tatanua mask. Tatanua masks are made especially for Malangan uh, uh, ritual. Yet another mask. There's a good culture of mask out there. There's a pull. Uh, this is a a, a pull up. It's a funerary figurine. It's these are sculptures made in chalk. Why? As I see this, it reminds me of Pashupati scene. Pull up figurines. They are uh, made of chalk. And they are small uh, funerary sculptures. And uh, again, they are associated with death rituals. They uh, so the stone that is this is the limestone that is used to make this pull up funerary figurine uh, is uh, found in the river beds of one of the Punam region, uh, known as Punam region, uh, at the south of New Ireland. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of step by step instruction to how, how to make this uh, limestone sculptures and uh, it is also said that only uh, it, it is it is very ritualistic and it's very traditional wherein women are not allowed to uh, to see this uh, to see this uh, sculptures rituals involved in selecting and making these figures involved a male relative of Piki specifically visiting the Russell Mountain quarries to acquire a suitable stone. The funerary sculpture was made by specialist artists. The carved figure was presented to local leader in secret, where it would be firmly kept and sometimes standing in person with other pull-ups within leaf decorated mortuary structures. Only men were allowed to visit ceremonial enclosure to view and perform rituals to the figures of the dead women and children. Uh, they're not allowed to enter, as said, and they were considered impure to see the figurines. And after uh, all the ritual was done, the figure was removed from the shrine in secrecy and destroyed to sim symbolically represent the release of the soul into the realm of ancestors. So it's like they have their own set of ways to conduct customs and rituals. They come to admire the islands. Are they are archipelago. Archipelago is a word used for the group of islands in Bismarck, to the north of New Guinea. Uh, they are also known as Manus Islands. 
and admire the islands are known for their Lapita community. Lapita culture is an ancient culture and they are known for their uh, Lapita pottery. Here we saw New Caledonia here and then we saw New Ireland here. And here is at my islands. Uh, Laputa pottery, pottery is a distinct pottery. The forms are very linear. It was produced in 1600 and 1200 BC on the Bismarck Archipelago. Artifacts, this is, uh, as you can see, the, this is very much copy pasted from, uh, this is not copy, uh, probably from Wikipedia, I guess. I had two sources from where I was getting my information. Artifacts exhibiting Laputa designs and techniques from period later than 200 BC have been found in Solomon Islands and the other islands of Melanesia. Laputa pottery styles from around 1000 BC from Fiji and Western Polynesia. In Western Polynesia, Lakita pottery became less decorative and progressively simple over time. It seems to have stopped to produce altogether in Samoa. So, but uh, it, the pottery is still extant. Um, maybe in a, in, a, in, a, in a present format. Here is an example of a pottery. Uh, if you see the designs are geometrical and definitely they are very simplistic. Get another example. And so this pottery is it's, it's, it's low fire. It's not glazed uh, or it's not uh, the furnace is not at a very high temperature, and they are tempered with shells and sand and decorated using a uh, tooth stem. It has been theorized that these decorations may have been transferred from less hearty materials such as bark cloth or mats or from tattoos onto the pottery or transferred from pottery onto those materials. Laputa art is like best known for itself. So the Laputa culture or the Laputa community also made other forms of art, but the pottery or ceramics is, is well known throughout the world. And they it's not just geometrical forms that they do, they also do anthropomorphic forms, some of the human sort of figures. And they uh, so these designs they uh, they incised uh, they, they engraved it on the surface of the on on the surface of the pots. Or to any or any other earthenware. Uh, like we uh, remember, like in uh, in our history, uh, like, like, in our history, uh, there's, 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 there's a term called punch mark points. They have stamped their uh, designs too. Uh, um, so the stamp let them have one design and then just to create those patterns. Easily found image on the internet. Can you repeat that once again? Because there was too much voice, so too much other noises coming in. So you please repeat that once again. Oh yeah. The I'm previous sorry. one. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, they have stamps, uh, like we have punch marked coins, wherein the design is made um, on a material and is stamped on the coins to create a plunging impression, to create a hollow impression. Likewise, they had stamp, and uh, uh, and, uh, and the stamps would have one design made on it. The stamps were made from wood. Uh, wood, wooden, so, uh, they, they were wooden uh, material. They were wooden. They were wood, wooden stamps. So the designs were made on stamp. A single design would be made on stamp, and they would be either incised or they would be pressed on the <coughs> uh, pottery, and that is how the patterns are created. This is an example of one of the patterns. It's a linear drawing. Yet another design of linear drawing. 
Just give me a moment, I guess. I hope my screen is not changed or anything. So now we come to New Guinea. Uh, New Guinea, again, uh, uh, it's like this Guinea thing. This, uh, I'm a little confused uh, while I was reading stuff. I, uh, stuff I'm, I'm still confused about the extent of entire Guinea island. Uh, New Papua Guinea is a proper demarcation on the entire island, and this side and on the east side of that island is uh, our group of islands that are known as Melanesian. Now, with this New Guinea, it is in the center of the entire Guinea island, but yes, it is in New Papua Guinea. Uh, and it is a part of uh, Melanesia. New Guinea is world's second largest island, as you want to know. So again, the top question is New Guinea. It's it's like so resembling to the uh, English word English to the English name of this island. Uh, here again, I put a photo of this guy who is very tribal and the tribal ways of living. Uh, some of the masks, this is a more resolution. Um, these are again some of the masks that are that have been done by Melanesians. Nations. Uh, there's also proper descriptions of masks. Uh, yeah, as you see that the uh, noses are quite elongated. The eyes, they look quite weird. Uh, some of, uh, a lot of, a uh, lot of masks together. Or to see and the kind of uh, designs with respect to the contours are also a very uh, prominent thing uh, that could be, that we could just understand is the color palette. Uh, this already it's because of wood basically. So uh, we just we 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 did. We did, I mean, I just told you about the drums and how these drums are used for uh, their cultural festivals. At present, Melanesia has a number of cultural festivals uh, being conducted. And so Melanesian welcome dance performed. Uh, it's like a welcoming dance performance by the tribes. As I told you, like they have art festivals, the Solomon Islands, Melanesian art festivals. Uh, it appears like a carnival. I'm sure it is a part. It would be like that. I have to dig deep. And uh, yet another house with a uh, wooden carving. Uh, it's just a wooden carving, a mask sort of thing. Not a mask, but a figure. Uh, but uh, I did not find here. I was trying to look around if there is a flesh patiere in this photo, but I couldn't see. Maybe this is not a house of chief. And uh, it was a short presentation on Melanesia. Thank you. No, that house. I was trying to read it, actually. Uh, where? If you, can you show the last image once again? Yeah, I will. I will. This one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you see something written on the uh, Yeah, SI, SI, something. Visitors, visitors. So it's supposed to be like a guest house. SI, visitors, is that something? Yes. Okay. SI, Okay, so uh, you completed your presentation, right? Yeah, and so this this appears like a latest. This appears like a present guest house or some sort of restaurant, something in an okay. in a traditional style. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much for for the presentation, and I, I want others also to join the discussion. If you have some questions or comments, uh, you may please uh, share it. Others, and when you talk, please turn your camera also on. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, please welcome. Whatever I know, I can answer. I will. Uh, uh, everyone, may please join. Mudra, Pallab, Silin, Abhiha, everybody. Uh, 
uh, one thing I was, uh, I mean, there was something very good I noted about your presentation that is, uh, you went to the languages, means the the uh, isin and that kind of thing. Uh, it says it's something new to me. I I never noticed that in my readings. It has not come. Uh, so thank but you for introducing. It's, it's uh, quite prevalent because uh, uh, actually I was getting confused as in what should I put in and what should I not because uh, uh, although there are these websites like Britannica and all which give the very but then that is not something how you would try to uh, put a presentation on. So I realized it might as well go by regional wise and also uh, like it's like maybe like India only. There are so many. They had so many cultures. That so many. Yeah, that's true, and, and thank you for introducing that uh, language. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's also so from there I came upon this discussion. There's also this whether English is a pidgin or not. A, is it forming a Creole language or not? English. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, means uh, in Admiralty Island, I think it was the Germans who occupied Admiralty Island. And is there any, you did not refer to the toxicin name of Admiralty, was there something like that? Or you uh, didn't notice that? Uh, yeah, I would have, uh, like, I would have really purposely skipped it. Uh, just out of curiosity, I am asking. Uh, because you said about most other names and it was interesting to know, okay, there is uh, such a way. I mean, uh, the, the development of their language uh, that was interesting uh, just curious and you also referred to the Pashupati Mudra Pashupati Mudra uh, the Pashupati seal uh, means you somehow related a uh, image of image that you are showing the Kulap the funerary sculpture uh, to the Pashupati so how do you relate I did not get that connection so I wanted to know how do you relate between uh, that particular funerary figure right? and the uh, Pashupati seal of Indus Valley. Can you just show that image again and just explain once more? Yeah, it was uh, solely because of the erect penis. I noticed that it was not sitting per se, but uh, it's a very common, the phallic thing. So that just made me to go back to Pashupati because this uh, this sculpture is uh, this sculpture making is also very, it's a traditional art piece. It's not a modern thing. It's been happening since the time this area has been developing. So, uh, so this is by color community. So that's how I just related it. It was an instant uh, re re relation, instant relevance. Okay, I, mean, I was looking at the form and trying to figure out uh, if it is related somehow, but uh, from the form, you don't feel it. That's right. Uh, and also, the, yes, I, uh, that figure was cross legged. It was not, uh, the parts were not on the ground, but in a cross legged. So, yeah, it doesn't have a chance but of. But the image you are, uh, the, the image you are showing was different, right? I don't get it. Can you show the image again? Yeah. Uh, so, so, just can you explain how do you relate that Ashupati seal and Kulap funerary figure, right? Just uh, you are not audible. You cannot hear me. Oh, yeah, now now audible, now audible. Uh, 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 it, it's just because of the erect penis that I felt like it. it, it okay. Uh, Yes, and here, yeah, it's, it's not a proper cross leg, but uh, I, I refer cross leg to something else, but he's like, he's a sitting position, that's it, and his hands are joined. It's when I noticed that uh, the, the phallic thing that I instantly went to that, see, it's it was an instant uh, remembrance of that. Okay, okay, okay. And when you look at those images, I feel like uh, the, the genital area means there is a figure that is shown behind. Yeah. Uh, the whole of the images, the genital area is very uh, given more prominence in all the figures. Yeah. Some kind of relevance is given. Maybe it is related 
funeral it is uh, you, you say it is funerary uh, but still uh, it has some kind of connection to fertility cult also that's what i felt i'm sure and uh, so it's quite interesting basically uh, with respect to their cultural uh, motifs and also uh, yeah, yeah, that's why i got confused of what all should i do basically and there's still more to read because of the okay. such is one thing okay. And there was one more thing I wanted to ask. We, we, I, when I give you the list, uh, um, I gave you the list of the islands. Okay, so yeah. you went through most of the islands, and when you come to the New Guinea region, Papua New Guinea, there are different regions within the larger islands. Yeah, yeah. Rua style, and and they are classified in the different style provinces. Yeah. So, uh, uh, didn't you find anything about uh, those uh, style provinces? Uh. Uh, actually, uh, what happened was like now when I was when I was just uh, plainly going through the Melanesian Islands, I saw that there's also Solomon Islands. There is this uh, Bismarck Archipelago. Uh, there is uh, there's everything that is included. And when I saw your slides, which you had asked me to, I saw that you've already uh, given this thing. Now, the quickest and the easiest way to present this thing is to put uh, to come onto these. Islands and then yeah, because because of course there's no one thing. If if, if there is a presentation about languages of Melanesian, I would rather stick to it, talk to sin and this one more thing rather than giving out everything because it's too much. Okay. Provinces thing still lack, and there's also still a big story of decolonization. There's a big story of how these uh, these people had a very despotic rule on these tribes. Uh, during the time when they came to this uh, New Britain, uh, okay. yeah, all, all these islands, and how uh, okay. even the story of these Polynesians uh, curbing the lands. Uh, so there's also within uh, that's also a struggle within that happened before, not now. Uh, also, how the Malaysians are quite indigenous and they do not have relation to Polynesians and to Micronesians. So it is said that they are a distinctive race and they do not have any relation to Polynesians. So any others, Pallab, uh, Silin, Udra and Fabiha, uh, anybody has something to ask? Hello. Uh, yeah. no, Urbi, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Pala. Okay, uh, you showed a totem pole uh, in front of the houses. So, uh, my question is uh, do they believe in any god or something like nature god? Because uh, they believed in ancestral god, right? Uh, so, the, the god thing now is a little bit. Not clear, but they, they have this very much culture of the spirits. All this uh, Flesher, Patel, they were all there to just get away from the spirits. They believe in the spirit thing a lot. Ritual, de, uh, uh, death ritual, right? The Malagan yes. or something like that. Malangan, yes. Uh, so, uh, so they uh, did they believe in uh, afterlife or? Yeah, it... yeah. There is a small thing about afterlife. Yes. Yeah. There is a bit now. I have to go back to reading, but I read somewhere afterlife. There is something very interesting okay. she pointed out in her slide. I noticed that. That was when the first Europeans came to Melanesia, they thought that their ancestors have come back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so they have that belief that their ancestors are still living. Afterlife is there. When the white people came there, they had a thinking that, oh, our ancestors are coming back. That, that's how they welcomed the uh, yeah. Europeans who came. That, that, was, that was a very that was funny right. thing. So I put it on. And they, and they don't have a supreme deity. They okay, have, thank you. Uh, like we thank saw you. with Africans, uh, they don't have a supreme deity, as, as in the case of Africans. They have cultural heroes. They have uh, belief in the spirit, animistic practices. It's all there uh, in Melanesia. Yeah. Yeah, any others? Willing? Mudra? 
Abhiha? No, I don't have any question. It was a good presentation, Orvi. Thanks. There are still lot for them. Yes, it was a good presentation. I hope micronations and pollinations have good time. Okay, so, so tomorrow who is presenting? Hello? Tomorrow it's Pallav, I guess, Thursday. Okay. So, so after you all present, I also may compliment with some of my presentations because I may uh, you may be taking through a different role. I have something else with me. So, so when I also compliment, uh, the course will be complete. Okay. Uh, so I want to listen to all your listen to you, all your presentation, and in of course, Uruvi, the area Uruvi was taking, uh, it's a very vast area. There are so many different uh, style provinces, so many different islands. And there's also have uh, different islands, but not as much as uh, Uruvi was supposed to look. So Uruvi is not able to complete the whole portion because uh, in, a one, in one hour it is uh, practically impossible. I have referred to that earlier also. So I will compliment whatever has been missed out. Okay, don't worry about Pura Nekar Paya. I said, no, no problem. Nahi hai. We'll just look at it again and uh, we'll discuss again. Okay. Yeah, I, I just made an effort to bring out the art art thing. So some of the important or the Okay. So, so thank you very much for your presentation. It was good. Uh, and um, one of the things you have to add with your presentation is you just at the last slide, at the end of the slide, you also add the references from which you have collected the materials. Okay. Uh, and when you are sending me the PowerPoints, uh, you have to submit it in the Google Classroom. So when you are submitting it there, uh, you have taken an image from somewhere. So if you click, if you right click on that image when you are taking from online, it will give you the uh, URL, the image address. It will be, you will be, you will be able to copy it. Put it in the note session. When you are showing an image, so, kahan se liya, wo uska niche wo notes mein dalo. Don't, don't, you did not put it in the text. But in the notes, you please add it. I hope it is clear to you. And at the end of the presentation, you also show what is the references, uh, the text, websites, articles, whatever you have access for making this presentation. Uh, you just give the references. Okay. So, we may also add it uh, when you are, before you are sending. Okay. Uh, also, I've added a lot of notes in notes section. I, yeah, I, yeah that, 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 that I already told you. That has to be there. Okay. That has to be there. In addition to that, add these two things. I think I one day I told you how to make the presentation, how to keep the notes, all these things I have explained to you one day. So I, I expect that already. But when you are putting an image, uska uh, URL, if it is available, you miss it. will be available anyway. You right click, you will get the image address. Image address milega if you if you are taking it from online. Uh, so so most most probably if you are taking it in uh, taking it from Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons, uh, that is it has a license that is uh, that license is given freely to all. Means I may not be very correct in saying that, but we can use it for academic purpose anyway. I not read the entire copyright policy, but uh, it is more or less an open source kind of thing. So. Uh, we are we will be free to use that. Even otherwise, for academic purposes, always considered as fair use. So don't, we are not making it use for any business. It's for academic purpose. So uh, it will be considered as fair use by most organizations. Uh, so this is what I wanted to add. Okay. So let us con conclude today. Tomorrow also the same time, right? Uh, 